Welcome back to another episode of Andrew Plays. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. And this day is a day unlike any other day, because today is a day that I have dubbed as Pango Day. That's right, today's game will be one of my favorite arcade classics from the 80s, Pango. More specifically, the Sega Game Gear version of Pango released in Japan in 1990 as a launch title for the Sega Game Gear. Um, so yeah, um, the reason why today, September 1st, is Pango Day is because in the original arcade version of Pango, um, there's a secret credits menu that you can access with a simple button combination. In the, um, Once you access this menu, if you look on the bottom of the screen, you'll notice a date that says 1982-9-1, or September 1st, 1982. Um, and well, nobody knows exactly what the date means. It could be the day when the game was finished, like the game was finished programming, or it could be the day when the game was released in arcades. But one thing's for certain, that date has something to do with Pango, and thus I've dubbed um, September 1st as Pango Day, and I shall celebrate with this special episode of Andrew Plays with a playthrough of um, Pango for the Game Gear. Uh, the Game Gear version is one of my f one of my favorite versions of Pango, and it's one of the ones I recommend to you if you want to play g the game. Besides, of course, the arcade version, which can be found if you look hard enough. Um, yeah, this is one that not many people remember. I mean, there are people who remember it, but it's not as well-known as other Sega arcade classics, and deserves some more attention, because I, I just love this game. It's just it's cute, it's colorful, has really good music, and I, I just can't get enough of Pengo. So, without further ado, let's get it started, shall we? So, the game is fairly simple. You play as a little red penguin named Pengo, and you have to walk around and push these ice bl these uh, blocks of ice while avoiding the evil snow bees that are trying to kill you. Um, Pengo can use these blocks as a means of attack, and yeah, your goal is just to eliminate the snow bees. It's fairly simple. And there are also these diamond blocks, which can't be destroyed. Um, but if you line them up, three in a row, you'll get a special bonus. If the blocks are touched, if one of the blocks is touching the wall, the bonus will be 5,000 points. But if none of the blocks are touching any of the walls, the bonus will be 10,000 points. And not only you can use the blocks to um, kill the snow bees, but you can also stun them by shaking the walls and then um, collecting their stunned bodies um, for points. It's simple, but it's fun. And it one of the coolest things about this game, or at least in some versions of the arcade game, as well as the Sega Game Gear and Sega Saturn versions, um, features an 8-bit rendition of the classic song Popcorn. I love popcorn. It's one of my, the greatest songs ever made. So the fact that Sega put the game in here, the song in this game, just makes it a whole lot better. And it's a great rendition, especially here on the Game Gear version. It's an absolute bop, if you ask me. Um, the thing about the the popcorn song in Pengo is that, like the the there are four different versions of the arcade game. Version 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's also a version 5 on main, but I don't know if that if that's supposed to be like an official version or something. But basically, versions 1 and 3 use Popcorn as the theme song for the game, while versions 2 and 4 use a, a, a new song composed for the game. Um, and unfortunately, the new song is absolute garbage, if you ask me. It just sounds dumb and... I just don't like it, like, at all. Every time I find a Pengo machine and try playing it with that, I just can't stand it. It is just... balls. But, anyway, 
Um. Uh, yeah. Um, I think the re- Some people speculate that they changed the song for copyright reasons, obviously, but... Like... Um, but yeah, honestly, the popcorn is just more fitting for the game because of the game bouncy nature and whatnot. And some of the home ports use the new song instead of popcorn, which is unfortunate because popcorn is easily the more superior song. But for the Game Gear version, Sega did us the courtesy and put the popcorn song in the game like it should be. Although, unfortunately, um, the popcorn song is only in like the first six or so level, first six acts of the game, I think. Like, um, um, and then after that, like they put in a new song. The new song for the pink for the Game Gear version isn't the same as the new song for the arcade version. It's actually a different song, and it is it is actually a nice song, but it it, it is no by no means uh, popcorn. So like, uh, um, yeah. And in the European version of the Game Gear version, um, they just completely removed popcorn and just used the new song throughout the whole game. And also, there is no US version of Pengo on the Game Gear. It was exclusive to Europe and Japan, so yeah, we missed out on a great game. And this was honestly a good idea for a launch title. A, such a simple but classic game for modern for a handheld. Like, you could play this on the go, wherever you wanted, with your Game Gear. Sega made a good choice with making this as a launch title, and they did a really good job, because this is very stunning. The colors look great, the sounds and music are just absolutely wonderful. Really helped show with the Game Gear's color screen that it had. Um... And also, uh, the Sega Saturn version also uses the popcorn song. The Sega Saturn version, um, is featured in the, uh, Sega Ages Memorial Selection Volume 1, which was only released in Japan, but luckily, Sega Saturn, um, you don't need to mod it to play Japanese games, you just need an, an action replay cartridge for it. You plug it into, like, the slot on the back of the the Saturn, if you do that, you can play any Japanese or European Saturn game, I think. So you don't even know how to go through too much trouble just to play the game on a, an American Saturn, or really anything. And I love the Memorial, Memorial Selection not only has Pengo, but it also has a couple other Sega Arcade classics, and even a for, even a, even includes um, Monaco GP. Which is really cool because the original Monaco GP did not run on CPU-based hardware. It ran on transistor-based hardware, just like other arcade games from the 70s. It was actually one of the last games to do that. But they had to program a new special version to work on the Saturn hardware, and they did a pretty good job, honestly. So, uh, yeah. But anyway... Um, Pengo is included in Volume 1 of the Memorial Selection. There's two Memorial Selection games for the Saturn. The first one has Pengo, and it, it, it's pretty, it's like, it, it's, it's nearly arcade perfect. Like, the sounds aren't exactly the same, but they still sound wonderful, and it uses popcorn as the main song. So, for those like me who adore the use of popcorn in the game, Oh, yeah, this is, uh, you're hearing right now the new song. Uh, yeah, this song is okay, but it's just not the same, you know? Come on. Yeah, this, this new song's okay, it's just, it's just not popcorn. But it's good to listen to, but I just wish they used popcorn throughout the entire game. I can never get tired of listening to Popcorn as the song for Pengo, or really for any occasion, because Popcorn is one of the greatest songs ever. Haha! <laughs> Here's a fun fact 
about uh, Pengo. It runs on a uh, hardware. It, I've heard uh, it's like Pengo uh, runs on Pac-Man hardware actually. Like the hardware is like is like similar, if not the same, as Pac-Man. And because like if you look in the code of Pengo, you can actually find one of the sprites from Pac-Man's death animation, which is pretty cool because like is proof that the game was used using Pac-Man hardware. Um, I just find that really cool in it. And actually, it's funny I bring that up because I recently um, went to the uh, Morristown Game Vault in Morristown, New Jersey, which is a retro arcade that I love going to because it's, you know, awesome and what have you. And well, one of the machines they had there was this really cool uh, Ms. Pac-Man cabaret machine which actually had a special board inside of it that uh, that had three games built into it. Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, and Pango. So, <clears throat> you get not only Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man, which are fantastic games, you also get Sega's Pango as a neat little bonus, which is really cool. And it, it works very well. So, I was happy to find that there. And... If you look on MAME, there's also a bootleg version of Pengo that also runs on the Pac-Man hardware. The sounds are slightly different, but they but it's the exact same song and the gameplay is the same. Like the instruments used are different, I mean. Yes, yeah, so you notice the game keyer version here, um, like the sprite, the sprites are like really big compared to all the blocks because they had to squeeze them down. But it's it's kind of funny, but it still works pretty well. Um, in my opinion, and it just makes it a little more cuter. As if Pengo couldn't get even uh, could, couldn't get any cuter than he than it already is. Yeah, we need Pengo to come back in some way, shape, or form. Like, maybe a new game, or, like, like, uh, or maybe, like, he could be a racer in Sonic, in, like, one of the racers in those Sonic racing games where they have all the Sega characters. Does Team Sonic Racing have any- wait. No, wait. Does Team Sonic Racing have other Sega characters? Or is it just Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, am I thinking of? But well, nonetheless, Penguin needs to come back in some way, shape, or form, because he's such a cute little red little penguin. One of the true heroes of Sega's past, like Opa Opa, Alex Kidd, uh, Joe Musashi from Shinobi, uh, uh, what else? Uh, what's another classic Sega hero besides, you know, those guys? Like, the heroes from before Sonic. Like, uh... Oh, uh, Flicky. Flicky, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, the Harrier from Space Harrier. That's a good one. Uh, the guy flying the plane from Afterburner. I guess he could kind of count, although we don't really see him in the game, so I'm kind of doubting the legitimacy of that. get those three blocks together and if you couldn't tell already I'm I'm lining up the diamond blocks um, one space away from the wall parallel to the wall because the ultimate strategy in uh, Pengo is to uh, do that because once you do that you can actually hide behind that wall of diamond blocks and just keep shaking the wall and stunning the enemies until like you kill them all because that's the most effective way to kill them all, because... Oh, the pa oh, uh, popcorn's back! That's cool! Heh, <laughs> I thought it was gone for good. 
I guess it like changes between the two every few rounds. I mean acts in the game. Oh. Honestly, considering considering that the Game Gear is basically just a master system with better graphics, um, at least the heart in terms of hardware, I'm surprised that like they didn't make like a a, a master system port of the Pengo game, like where they just took the game and just upscaled it, just put it on a master system cartridge, because they did that with so many games back then, like, in Europe and in Brazil, they just took a Master System game, um, put it on a, uh, put it on, they took a Game Gear game, put it on a Master System cartridge, and just sold it as a Master System version, like, they did that for, like, I think they did that for, I think they did that for Baku Baku Animal, like, there was a Game Gear version, but in Brazil, they, like, uh, uh, I think they, like, Put on a Master System cartridge, and they didn't even change the aspect ratio or anything. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't do that with this. Um, I heard someone actually made a homebrew of it for the Master System, where they took the Game Gear version and just put it on a Master System cartridge. But yeah, I'm, I'm su Sega. Sega should have done that back then. But yeah, that was Pengo for the Game Gear. Very fun arcade game, classic game, a game that is truly bestowed in my heart, and. I highly recommend you guys check it out in some way or form. Like, if I were to recommend three versions of the game to you, I'd recommend either the arcade version, preferably with the popcorn song, the Game Gear version, preferably the Japanese version since it has popcorn song, the European version doesn't have popcorn song, at least to my knowledge, and or the Sega Saturn version in Sega Ages Memorial Selection Volume 1, which also has the popcorn song and nothing else. So, uh, yeah. That's just about it. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying your day. September 1st is Pango Day, so try to see if you can find a way to play Pango. But honestly, it's never a bad day to play some Pango. Unless someone says otherwise. I don't know. It's not really a, It's not really my call on that. But it's a fantastic game, and you, ju you just got to give it a chance. Just got to check it out and just see for yourself how truly awesome Pango is. So, uh, yeah, as always, um, I'm your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later. Happy Pengo Day.